One of the South's most prestigious universities is undergoing a crisis of faith, an emotional conflict involving faith-based organizations. Senior National Correspondent John Roberts has the story from Nashville, Tennessee. It is a bastion of liberal arts in a sea of Bible Belt conservatism. And now Vanderbilt University is in a battle over religious freedoms. We come together to do things that Christians do together, pray and have Bible study. And come and pray to me, and I will hear you. Justin Gunther is president of the Christian Legal Society, one of four Christian student groups at Vanderbilt that risk being shut down. The reason? This language in CLS's constitution, that its officers are expected to lead Bible studies, prayer, and worship at chapter meetings. Vanderbilt says that violates the university's non-discrimination policy to allow anyone to apply for leadership in the group, regardless of their religious beliefs. The provision has been in CLS's constitution for years. Gunter has been negotiating with the university, but says he won't take it out. At the point where they're saying that we can't have Bible studies and prayer meetings as a part of our constitution, if we go beyond that, we're compromising the very identity of who we are as Christians and the very thing we believe as religious individuals. So why has this become a problem now? Last fall, an openly gay student complained he was kicked out of a Christian fraternity. Vanderbilt launched a review of all student organizations. As a result, about a dozen, including five religious groups, were put on provisional status. Vanderbilt says it's committed to making our campus a welcoming environment for all of our students and that student groups are aware of their need to comply with the university's long-standing non-discrimination policy. Critics say Vanderbilt's actions take political correctness to new highs. In an op-ed, law professor Carol Swain charged Vanderbilt was flirting with religious depression. I see it as part of a larger attack on religious uh, freedom that's taking place across the country, especially when it comes to conservative groups. We reached out to Vanderbilt officials several times, asking them to respond on camera directly to the concerns of these religious groups. They refused our request for an interview, only giving us a written statement that said they continue to work with the groups to bring them into compliance with Vanderbilt's non-discrimination policy. Kyle Blaine has been following the story for the Vanderbilt student newspaper. He says there's nothing but confusion at the moment. I don't think that Christian organizations know where they're going. They've expressed to me that they feel like the rug's going to be pulled from under their feet at any moment. Um, and the university has expressed to me that they really want to get this right. Lord God, we... Gunter says anyone is welcome to join the Christian Legal Society. But he adds, in order to be a Christian organization, CLS needs Christian leaders. I think as they really delve into the issues, they will change their minds and they will agree to us and allow Vanderbilt to be a place that really respects all religious people and provides a religious diversity. One religious organization, the Catholic Student Group, did come into compliance by watering down its constitution so that leaders are only required to be undergraduate students at Vanderbilt University. The Christian Legal Society, which has had problems with non-believers in the past, says it can't go that far. Brett? Thanks, John.